takes guts. You got to dig down deep to gut it out. Keep on going again and again and again until you make it happen because you know that it's possible. Now, what do you do during the hard times, Les? Here's what you must do. Number one is you must have faith. Paul said you must have the faith to call forth those things that be not as though they were. Judge not according to appearances. Don't judge your circumstances and the possibilities for your future based upon what you have now and because of what's going on now. No, 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 no. That's not the real reality there. What you're going through, if you're going through some hard times, it has not come to stay, it has come to pass. It's all right. Now, second thing is, repeat this after me, something you should affirm to yourself every day. Repeat this, please. No matter how bad it is, or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. Say that to yourself every day. As I used to say to myself, I, when I would get up in the Penobscot building and I had to go into the bathroom and, and bathe in the bathroom sink, I had written on the mirror that I put up, it just paste up and I read, no matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. So you've got to have faith, you talk to yourself, you say that affirmation. The next step is, you must have patience and engage in consistent action. Patience and engage in consistent action. See, everything does not always happen, ladies and gentlemen, when we want it to happen. It doesn't happen quickly. So in that process, they have something in the Far East called the Chinese bamboo tree. The Chinese bamboo tree, every day it has to be watered and fertilized. It's a very hard nut, nut and, and it takes five years of, of watering and fertilization every day, according to American Geographics, before it breaks through the ground. At any time, if the watering process and the nurturing and the fertilization process is stopped, the Chinese bamboo tree will die in the ground. Now, once it breaks through in that fifth year, then in six weeks it grows 90 feet tall. Now, the question is, does it grow 90 feet in five years or six weeks? The answer is obvious. It takes five years. That's how long it took to grow it, to build that foundation, to nurture it, to water it, to build the reputation, to build the credibility, to learn the market, to learn people, to learn yourself, to learn the system, to learn how to do it, to figure it out. That's why you must have patience and engage in consistent action. We live in a world, ladies and gentlemen, where people want instant gratification. They want it right now. They want to be a Dexter Yeager, but they're not willing to pay the price to do what it takes to get up there where Dick Hopper is. Where Brian or Judy is. They think it was easy. No, no. It's simple, but it's not easy. It's a system that if you work the system, it works if you work it. But make no mistake about it. It's hard. You are the determining factor. Here's something else. It's possible you can live your dream. It's necessary that you have goals, that you write them down, that you surround yourself with a support team, that you are creative. It's you that you must take with personal responsibility to make it happen. George Bernard Shaw said, the people that make it in this world look around for the circumstances that they want and if they can't find them, they create them. It's hard, no easy, it's not an option. However, ladies and gentlemen, what you will discover is that it's worth it. It's worth it. I suggest to you, if you want to become Diamond, write down five reasons of why it is worth it for you to become a Diamond, to experience that level of achievement. What is it that will give you the drive? What is it that will ignite 
the courage in you to get up and come back again and again and again. How is it that you would be able, what reasons that can tap in to that deep down feeling that goes to your gut, that no matter how many times you get knocked down, that you're coming back? What is it? Write it down. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You saw that picture up there, the lady, Mrs. Mamie Brown. I'm flying from here tomorrow morning to be with my adopted mother. She's 87 years young, thank God. Now I'll be with mama tomorrow. Every Mother's Day, I don't care where I am, I go home, Mother's Day, everybody knows, November 6th, my mother's birthday, I'm home, and I try to go home as often as I can. When I started and left Miami pursuing my dream, because I knew that as long as you work for someone else, they are controlling your destiny. I don't want anybody signing my paycheck but me. I knew that it was going to be difficult, I knew it was going to be hard. But every time I thought about giving up, and there were times I did. Because where I am, ladies and gentlemen, it's a long shot. You think being a diamond is a long shot. This is a miracle. This is a long shot. And I had people laughing at me. Les, you're talking about being a motivational speaker? You have no college training? You were labeled educable, mentally retarded? You failed twice in school? They put you back from the fifth grade into the fourth grade and you fail in the eighth grade? You've never worked for a major corporation, and you are going to become independently wealthy. Right. They laugh. They're going to laugh at you. People are going to laugh at you. But let me tell you, I, I believe in revenge like Frank Sinatra. He said the best revenge is massive success. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was driving around with my mother and she saw a house, we were just looking for homes and we drove an exclusive area of Miami where the coach of the Miami Dolphins, Don Shula, lives in that area called Country Club. My mother saw this house, oh, that's what a beautiful home. And we looked at it, she said, oh boy, I, I, I would love to have something like that. One day I would feel like Mrs. Rocker. I said, you like that mom? I said, yeah. I said, oh, we just kept driving. I did not let my mother know at that time that I had it etched in my mind that I was going to do whatever number of meetings, whatever number of contacts, whatever number of calls I had to make, whatever it took to make that become a reality. And the day that I drove to that house and, and said, mama, you remember that house you saw? We got out the car and said, yes. I said, I really know the people that live there. She said, you do? I said, yeah, let me take you in and show it to you. And then I couldn't contain myself anymore when I got around and helped her get out of the car. And I took her and I said, Mom, I gave her the keys. Over 5,000 square feet. Large size Olympic pool, 12 feet deep. On a golf course, basketball court. She, I said, Mama, this, this, this is for you. And ladies and gentlemen, to, to see my mother, walk around this house. This woman, who only has a third grade education, never had any children of her own. And she walked around and she said, Oh Lord, oh thank you Jesus. No, no one would have ever, ever told me this would have happened to me. She said, Leslie, she said, you know, that day when I, I went in that building and they told me this lady had these, these boys that she wanted to put up for adoption. And I told him, I said, I'll, I'll take them. And, and she said, ladies, she said, raise your hand and swear to me two things. I said, what is it? She said, swear to me, you won't separate them. She said, oh, no, I swear. I'll keep them together, I swear. I've never had no children, I swear I'll keep them together. She said, swear to me, lady, that you won't ever tell them about me. She said, I'm married and I got pregnant while my husband was at war. She said, swear to me, you won't tell. She said, I swear I won't tell. She said, okay, you can have them. She said, when I came out that house, and I was looking at y'all, she said, I didn't know how I was going to do it. She said, I was working at the m, &M cafeteria. She said, I didn't know how I was going to raise y'all. I, I just knew somehow, somehow the Lord would make a way somehow. And I never thought this would happen to me.
And I know, and during those moments when it's hard, not only must you have patience and engage in consistent action, but you must turn to a power greater than yourself and just say, Lord, whatever I face today together, you and I can handle it. And I know some way and somehow you'll make a way for me.